You know, I got a story to tell today, chat. You know, I got a story to tell today. I, I really want to put up some really explicit pictures, but I got a story to tell today, chat. I want to put up some explicit pictures, but, you know, can't get banned again. We don't rumble rocking, but we don't know about other places. Get a little more light on my face. Pause. Wait, see this? Oh, okay. Mm, a little bit less. Right there with it. Holy. Everybody, welcome in. Uh, Big Act in the building. Apologies if you've been wondering where I've been. Doing a bunch of stuff, man. Recording a bunch of podcasts, some of which you haven't seen yet. You should have seen the... um. Troy Ave episode, which is like four hours long, is going to be broken into two podcasts for Off the Record. He completely blacked out. I can't wait for you guys to see that. Can't wait for you guys to see that. That's probably going to be dropping tomorrow. But not only that, um, I told you guys eventually this was going to happen. The Academy is going to be launching a potential. And it's actually, we're dropping a pilot tomorrow. Um... I think tomorrow, I don't want to push it to Tuesday, uh, I think tomorrow, um, for a potential podcast that could be under network, okay? It's going to be up to the people, and the people um, are interested in it, we'll do it. If not, it's a, it's a wrap, you know what I mean? It is what it is. Um, I'm talking to two other people about doing podcasts, and I, I will say this to y'all, I won't... I, I'm, I, <sighs> I want to have a slate or a program slate of about four to five shows. One being completely homegrown. The others, I'm going to utilize personalities who always fuck with the brand. So there's a few other people who are in the mix of doing a podcast with um, the Academy. And and um, we'll see, you know, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. But you're going to start seeing things launch. I always told you that May was the, the, the month. That not only my head, um, well, the extended part of my headquarters is going to open up because we have like we have a whole section just for off the record. Um, we were going to start doing things with other people, so um, you guys are going to see some stuff tomorrow. And I guess this is a church announcement, so whatever it is. But yeah, please be please be warned. You're going to see a lot of things in the next six to seven months. Now. I'm being very open and honest with y'all. This is a path to possibly expanding. I don't necessarily need none of these niggas. And for the the established people who are going to be on my pod, uh, on, on the, my network, I don't think they need me neither, okay? Um, I, I'm staying away from my first podcast with um, to launch with people that you may not know. So these are people who are personalities, rappers, or just whatever. So... You, you, you'll hear more about that. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Holy shit. Is everybody online? Because I want to get straight to it. Just give me a second, chat. I just want to make sure we can get straight to, to this shit. Okay, YouTube is getting online. We're on Rumble. Everybody know we're on Rumble. And we're on Twitch. Let's get straight to it, people. Yo, Freddie Gibbs, man. This is what I call a checkmate. I've said previously that our back and forth was always pointless because if you don't know the history of me and this bitch, Freddie Gibbs, that's the bald headed nigga right there with low self-esteem. He took an innocuous comment about rap sales. And I have to give this context before I get into some of the shit I'm going to get into, because you know what y'all going to say? Ak, who are you? Why are you doing this? Let me tell you this, chat. 
I am guilty of being weak. Because in the last few days, I've had my hand on the guillotine for this nigga Freddie Gibbs. And I said, ah, ah. At the end of the day, I'm a man as well. Let me spit. And I won't lie to you. Other people had to hit me up and said, Ack, if you don't stop being a bitch, if this was you, you would already be dead. And I had to think about this. It was a real awakening moment. Do you have mercy for the people who would never have mercy for you? Do you have mercy for the people who await and have laughed and have celebrated at any moment that they thought you were at your lowest? When is it too far? What is forgiveness? Should you forgive? And could someone cross a line that's too far that you can't forgive? So before I get into anything I will get into today, I have to give you a slight and quick context of why me and Freddie Gibbs have been into it. Freddie Gibbs at once upon a time caught a rape charge. I don't know if you knew. He caught a rape charge. He was locked up for months in a overseas prison because they said, like, you got to imagine. And, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm editorializing. This nigga goes overseas to rap. Ain't no bitch pussy getting wet to a, to, to a nigga who's rapping about fictional coke raps thinking he's a lyrical miracle type of nigga. So he sees some white bitches overseas. And allegedly, this was the story that they said, allegedly, after being horny as a motherfucker, he was like designer out there. You know, designer had to whack it on the plane. That's kind of the horniness. Let me not put designer into this mess. But he was accused of raping a woman. Now, I will tell you this because, again, and I'm going to tell you how I covered that story that I never met Freddie Gibbs. Apparently, I did meet Freddie Gibbs eventually. And I'm going to give you that story, too. But at that time, I never knew who he was. I really didn't even have that much contact with the industry. However, I saw somebody who was possibly falsely accused, and I covered it, and I said, this is fucked up. I see some people say she was underage, too. Now, I'm going to be honest. You see, at the end of the day, I always tell people, when you dig, dig a grave, make sure you dig two. Dig one for yourself and dig one for the person you're trying to bury. There are certain things, domestic abuse, false sexual assault, being extorted, being accused of all type of things. As a black male, it actually could happen to anyone. So be very careful when you try to, because you don't like a nigga, you try to kick him in the, in the fucking grave. And I didn't know Freddie Gibbs at the time. Of course, I never listened to the music. But I was one of the people saying, well, th 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 this story seems fishy. Now, I, I, I want to not, like, I want to fast forward a little bit because what ended up happening is that, and you, and, and let me tell you this, I don't have to, and, and, and this is where I'm going to differ. And this is where, if you ask me when I said I had a moment of weakness, I don't have to lie on a nigga to, to really get him. See, Freddie Gibbs is a liar. And I'm going to tell you how he lied on me. But he's someone who will do anything to try to get a one-up on me in social media or whatever the case is. I won't. So everything I'm going to say today is going to be only the truth and nothing but the truth. But I do have to point out, there was a time that I could have been dishonest. There was a time that I could have, like, make him look a certain way. And even today, even when I don't like this nigga, I will still not do that because that's scummy. So let me bring it up. Freddie Gibbs got falsely accused of rape. He's not a rapist. And that's why no matter what he said to me, I've never said he's a rapist. He's not a rapist. It's a false uh, uh, accusation. It came out later 
that the woman who was accusing him, the police couldn't even really find proof that they ever really met, much less had sex. That, that's whoa. Yet he was locked up for a long time. So I reported on that story like through, uh, through and through. And by the way, I don't know if there's another story about that. I haven't really looked into it. But I only reported on the public finance. And what ended up happening was that eventually he was allowed to come back to the United States and the charges were dropped. I was happy for him. Never met him, never talked to him, but I'm like, it's a black man in America, man. And he, and he went over to one of them countries where black men definitely, you know, they don't see too many of them um, um, who are successful, much less being a rapper, blah, blah. Anyway, here's the point. I'm on Everyday Struggle one day, and this is how long it is, because I haven't been on Everyday Struggle for two to three years. And I'm on there with Wayno, and a topic comes up about relevancy. Now, you guys know I cover sales in this and third. And when I do cover sales, I, I kind of speak honestly. And what happened was that he had a beef with Jeezy. If you don't know, he used to be signed to Jeezy back in the day. Now, he's one of the late bloomers. He's like a two chains. He's like one of them niggas who he ain't get to his prime or he ain't get on until he's 35. So when he did finally get on, Jeezy already had a full career. Like, Jeezy's chilling. He's just a legend, right? That Jeezy doing verses and shit like that. Regardless, Jeezy dropped an album and it, and it did 50K. He came out and said Jeezy was irrelevant because Jeezy no longer was selling hundreds of thousands of copies first week. Jeezy was only selling 50K. Now, he who was in his, like, you know, up and comings in the industry, he dropped the project and sold 50K as well. So the only thing that started an issue with me and Freddie Gibbs was me saying, well, Freddie, we just got to be honest. If you're calling Jeezy irrelevant for selling 50,000 records and you just sold 50,000 records, y'all both are irrelevant. Don't just call out him when you're doing the same thing. That triggered this bald headed motherfucker to the utmost. I have to, and again, I know some of you, I'm like, you actually heard the story. I have to point it out. Because when we get into some later stuff, and it involves children, y'all going to be like, ah, chill. I tweeted a few things. You know, people say, yo, wow, these are the most savage tweets I've ever seen. And I look at it, everybody, I'm like, y'all ain't see what he was saying about me? Freddie Gibbs, after I said that, well, if, if y'all both did the same numbers and you say he's irrelevant, you're both irrelevant. You know what Freddie Gibbs responded to me and said? He said, you're a bitch. Okay, nobody cares about that. He tweeted out memes saying, I can't wait till you're in your casket that I could show up to your funeral and spit on it. Can't wait till you die. Continue to basically said, that my comments was equatable to him wishing death on me. Okay. Later that year, eventually I went to No Jumper in, in LA and I did an interview with them. Freddie tweeted out publicly after I left the interview saying, yo, I knew he was there. I was about to show up and I was going to kill him in that building. I was going to commit a homicide. I was going to, Murder academics. By the way, I know some of you are like, no, he's joking. It's all jokes till you see it, uh, until you're the person in the crosshairs. That's not a joke. I don't joke with niggas like that. You tell me if you joke with niggas like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, nigga, I know you was on that block, nigga. I ain't gonna lie. I was about to drive through there and murder you, nigga. So when I seen that, I'm like, okay. Now, granted, I did know there was a part of it that he was doing for internet clout. But this is the sad story of Spready Gibbs. And I'm going to lay it out for y'all because where we're at right now is, is culminated into a sad reality that he's never taken responsibility for. We found out that his father is a cop. We found out that he has a brother that's a doctor. 
and another brother that's a district attorney. Yet, them being harassed, he didn't care. Because let me tell you this, I chose this life, but somebody like Spready Gibbs is the worst type of person. A person who action, they put everybody in the crosshairs to absorb the consequences while they skate on by and try to LOL it out. So let me get back to the... um. no jumper situation that was odd to me i said well wow okay now i'm gonna be honest with you what freddie gibbs did was a directed threat upon my life me and freddie gibbs freddie gibbs can't see me and shake hands with me I'm, he's already made very public threats that's documented we're looking at any time we see him as this is a guy who promised to kill you that's it I've never, I'm not trying to talk to him about nothing. By the way, also for some of y'all, I'm like, actually, whatever. I've also said this nigga like, yo, if you just want a box or some shit like that, come over here. We can handle it. No response. What he did, leak my number. Put the messages out. In reality, this is just a bitch ass nigga trying to get internet clout. Now, it's always boggled my mind with Freddie Gibbs because you're a backpack rapper. You're, well, not backpack rapper. You're like one of these little lyrical miracle niggas. You're not future, my nigga. You're not young thug you're not some of these guys who are you know um considered more let's say not on the lyrical side where social media helps them like you're one of them niggas who it's one of them lyrical niggas but that's it so that shocked me people expect to see cloud chasing shit from a 6ix9ine a yachty a uzi other people you don't expect to see it from the guys who quote unquote are like fundamentalist when it comes to rapping so let me speed the story up i realize this guy is just a cloud chaser and just a jokester now let me get to the relevant part a few months ago and i probably could google it but let's not do the googling right now After unsuccessfully trying to bait me into helping him sell albums, he dissed like eight to nine other rappers. He dissed Gunna, 21 Savage. He re-dug up a beef with Jim Jones, dissed him again. Um, Benny the Butcher, who thought he was friends with, with, with Freddie Gibbs. And essentially just... Pretty much what happened was that in Prime 112, Jim Jones caught him, beat the brakes off of him. By the way, they have history before because this ain't got nothing to do with, with Jim Jones. But allegedly after dissing Jim Jones, some random people in New York took it upon them to shoot at him. Don't know why that happened. But okay. And then he goes to Buffalo and he got beat up. By like 10 niggas. And who's from Buffalo? Griselda. Who do people think was behind that? Perhaps Benny the Butcher. Now, I had to do that real quick catch up because we got to talk relevant shit. Now, y'all know what he's done, what he said about me. By the way, there was a time that I was just like, Freddie, it's not that serious. I like, I didn't. I didn't me saying that if you're if you call Jeezy relevant, you must be relevant too. That that's not me attacking your character, your manhood, threatening your life, but he did the same to me. So I'm only giving you this context because everything else I'm gonna say after this needs that context. Because if you take it without context, I'm gonna seem like an evil motherfucker. But I'm not. Not somebody who pick fights. I'm somebody who responds. Okay. So after two beatdowns in six months, Spready Gibbs was 
wifey hits me up a few months ago. Who is his wifey? She's right here. She's right here. Her name. What is her name? Well, it used to be like her Instagram was like the fit mommy. Now, uh, you know, I'm going to be very fair and very honest here. We're, we're about to. I'm going to defeat this thing with honesty. No lies. She was a she was a porn star who he wifed up after having multiple failed relationships with his baby mama and being labeled a deadbeat, he wifed her up because let's call a spade a spade. Freddie Gibbs found a success in his career later than earlier. And when he found that success, if you look at his baby mama and his kids, and I'm not, I'm not here to weaponize or go after his existing kids at all. Trust me. He's the Negro who feels, I finally made it. Let me go get a white girl. So, this and she became his Beyonce. This was his trophy. This is, and a lot of dudes do it. This is his Hey, y'all, I finally made it, girl. He's never been public like this with any woman before. He's never showcased up. Do you think that's the only picture that exists? Now, there are a lot of them that are explicit. But there's a lot that exists with them. Give me a second. We could keep going. This was the apple of his eye. His ultimate crush. This his this is his queen. This Ultimately, was his Beyonce. He put her on first class flights. For whatever reason. And we'll get to that too. He knew she was a porn star. But he tried to convince her to stop. Now, I have the only reason why I bring up mentality here. Because a dusty Negro like Freddie Gibbs, who was accused of being with underage children overseas, which, again, allegedly didn't happen. He beat the case. The reason why this is important is that Freddie has suffered from a syndrome called I wish it was me syndrome. He's been trying to be the lit rapper forever. That's why he got mad at me comparing him to Young Jeezy, when Young Jeezy was in the twilight of his career. I know I said Beyonce, but this picture shows you. This bum-ass nigga who's like 50, he thought this was his Amber Rose. He thought this was his Amber Rose. Let me go to YouTube for a second. I just want to show you the nature of the relationship. It's a bunch of videos of them horse playing around. By the way, this is him talking about the love of his life only seven months ago. By the way, just to let you know, she is six months pregnant. So a month before he got her pregnant, this is how he talked about her.
So you're pretty public with your lady, Fit Mommy, who's, yeah. by the way, a great hang. Definitely. I love her. Shout she's, out. A, she's amazing. Shout uh, out to you, Destiny. Shout out to Destiny, a.k.a. the Fit Mommy. Yeah. Uh, she said she's going to legally change her name to Fit Mommy. Yeah. I was like, bitch, you crazy as fuck, bitch. What the fuck? I ain't about to be walking around calling you Fit. Hey, Fit. I barely found out her fit, real, I, I barely found out her name was Destiny like six months ago. Right. I'd be like, just use your fuck. Now, this is where academics comes in and adds some context. Her name is Destiny Creams. Now, what's going to be missing from this story Remember I told you she was a porn star? She was creaming over every nigga's dick in L.A. Getting fucked left, right, and center. Freddie is the first hip-hop cuck. And what I mean cuck, because I know some of y'all going to be like, listen, me and Selena was never together. That's number one. <laughs> number two, <laughs> he understood and he approved of what she was doing. She wasn't doing this in secrecy. Like, and I think this is where the whole issue is coming in. He knew he was with a porn star. What's, what I've heard, Freddie Gibbs got off. He's one of them kinky niggas. He's, he'll beat his dick to another nigga fucking his girl. So he's one of them dudes. Cucks, okay? So that's been him. And that's been his lifestyle. Anyway, hear him talk about this girl. Fucking name, <laughs> Destiny Fox. Use your name. Um, but what? Because you've obviously been in many situations since I've known you. What is it about this one that you makes that I makes have? you so Damn. happy? Damn, I don't be even claiming business, Kev. But that's what, what I mean. That's what I mean. I mean, I mean, that's <laughs> why I said situation. You hear him? He said, "I don't claim girls." Chips. <laughs> um. I don't know, man. We just, you know, we got a good bond, you know, and that's, that's first and foremost. You got to fuck with somebody that accept you for you, you know what I mean, and know that you like girls, know that you, you know, you know, like to do what you do and, you know, have fun and, you know, and and with the same, you, you got to accept all of their things. And I think that it's acceptance that, you know, make the bond with me and her go so strong, you know what I'm saying? That's fair. It's love, you know what I mean? Like, we ain't never, we ain't never, you know, of course, you know, people argue. Like She's any, super solid. Any fucking cup. Now, it's very important that I bring this up because the story of Spready Gibbs would be incomplete without me telling you how fragile the male ego is. Anytime you see a simp or a cook talking like how he is, like, oh yeah, I'm so I'm cool, knowing that his girl is sucking and fucking any and everybody, they're coping. They're not telling the truth. They'd rather their girl not do that. But they're going to act like they're in control of their feelings publicly. Now, we're going to get to his demeanor about her, her fucking dudes versus how he's acting here. Double Super argue. Solid. She get on my fucking nerves. I get on her nerves. But, uh, you know, when you get that family bond, and, you know, that's, that's kind of tough to break. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I just saw you guys were, you like, were hanging out with our pops, and the kids were there. Yeah, we was hanging out with our pops, kids. We all, like, family, you know what I'm saying? We was just in New York, me and my baby mom. Shout out to Risa, you know what I'm saying? Like, we was all, you know, chilling. And, you Do know, the baby mamas there. get along? Uh, My baby mom and my girlfriend get along, so okay, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody's now. I want to call this nigga out because I heard him, I heard he talked to Freddie about me one time. Let me see if I can pull the video up on this. And you know what? I'm gonna be honest. This is about to be a blackout stream. In the same interview, he said this about me. I mean, you've okay. always played with the idea of retiring. Like, I've heard you say multiple times, this is my last album. Yeah. I feel like that every time. You don't give a fuck. Come on, you nigga. Ever... Shit with it be you. Cause oh, yeah. <laughs> you're fucking. Because I'm a turn. You're the into... funniest rapper. Because I'm going to turn it into comedy, man. I'm going to turn everything into something funny, man. Because it's all jokes to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we can laugh about all of this shit the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Until you, you know, try to get physical. But other than that, like, you know. <laughs> You know, like motherfuckers try to play with me and I just make their ass and I turn their ass into memes. Ass academics. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, 
And like I said, I don't even know him like that either. I probably met him like once or twice, but you know, it seemed like he got everything in the world to say about me, and that's cool. He's been a he's been a big promotional force for me these past two years. So thank you. You think I've turned you into? Let me tell the story. So I never knew this. I never knew I met this fucking clown, but I did. So back when I'm on Everyday Struggle, and I don't give a fuck about talking about some bum-ass nigga named Freddie Gibbs, but they would bring him up, so I would talk about him. But these niggas, they're dick riders. Like, Freddie Gibbs, he likes to act like, no, no, he's a dick sucker. I'm going to tell you where I met him. Salute to my man Carl Cherry, and everybody, I'm naming, I'm naming every fucking name. Carl Cherry works at Spotify. I got a podcast at Spotify. I ask these niggas, ain't nobody could lie because academics don't lie. Carl Cherry had a Spotify party then. I was not at Spotify at that time. I was only at Complex. And he said, Ack, Carl Cherry's always fuck with me. He said, Ack, pull up. To said, Ack, you don't really come outside like that. Pull up. This is an industry event. By the way, ironically, oh, I'm going to give you the whole, the whole story that night. This is why also when y'all be like, yo, Ack, yo, this, that, I've seen, like, again, let me give you the full story. Act pull up. I'm like, oh, we in LA. I don't know if I want to pull up. Nadeska, who's my homegirl, and my moderator on the show, is like, Act, you got to pull up. Yo, this is going to be lit. Everybody's going to be here. I'm like, yo, you don't give a fuck about industry. She's like, well, you can just come and just kick it with us. Um, and I'm like, yo, y'all going to know everybody. I don't know none of these niggas. And this is how I met Freddie Gibson. I never knew I met my brother told me it was like, because I brought my brother too. It was like, yo, you know you met Freddie Gibbs. I'm like, no, I never f met Freddie Gibbs. He was like, yeah, you did. Remember, I don't know none of these industry niggas. That's another reason why young boy talking that industry shit. Young boy, you way more industry than me, nigga. I am so upset still about young boy saying that. Nigga, you can't tell me. Nigga, you're all in the Capitol building doing interviews with Billboard. Billboard don't even know me. How could you? I I'm going to get to young boy too. I would never let no niggas call me no industry shit because I don't know these niggas. Okay, so I go to this fucking party. <sighs> that time is after the Vic Mensa shit. I got 15 people out there with me. I don't know who like me, who don't like me, but I got a big sprinter. I remember the shit was so big we couldn't park at regular like little parking spots. Like We just got a big ass sprinter that I paid for. And I got mad niggas with me. I don't, like, there was another, uh, this wasn't a time where we were, it was like all chat nigga shit. No, no, Because I was, I, there was a point, I was, everybody was in chat nigga hoodies. But anyway, I had this big ass sprint. I got my brother, I got like mad people with me. Uh, I picked up Nadeska. I think Cornell was with me too, which was the dude who was the, the EP of the show. He's with PG Lang now. Um, Who else, who else? Joe didn't come out, but it was just like all my people and shit. We show up to this shit. It's a Spotify event, but it was like a Spotify joint event with somebody named Ethiopia. Ethiopia was the fucking um, like head of Motown Records. Now she's on QC or like she joined because Motown and QC kind of did some shit. But yeah, so it was like a Ethiopia part. It was like a party celebrating like not only Carl Cherry, but like this black female executive who have done really great over Capitol Records. So, bro, I don't know who none of these people are, like other than Carl, right? Remember Carl came to the show? So I'm like, yo, all right, cool. I go over there, right? I fucking go there. We part this big ass fucking sprinter and we walk to the spot. When we go there, we're like, oh, Axe downstairs, like they're letting us up. We get in the elevator. And I think I've told you this part of the story before. It's like eight of us in the first elevator. There's other people that's going to be coming afterwards. And who was in the elevator with me? Ruri. That's another reason why I'm mad. Like, Ruri's even. I never thought I had issues with none of these niggas. Ruri's in the elevator with me. I think it's him and one other person. And I got eight people with me. And he doesn't say, fuck you, act nothing. I know he was talking slick a little bit. I ignored him. Also, I'm not trying to go to some industry shit, and and, and like, I'm not no nigga that's going to be running up on people pressing them. But I got mad people with me, just in case. Ruri's in the elevator. I met him at Joe's spot. 
right? He was giggling all that shit. I noticed he ain't say nothing to me, but I was gonna say nothing to him too because that nigga been talking slick about me because he was hating on the fact that I was on on um everyday struggle. But he's in the elevator with me and seven or eight other people. No words. All right, whatever. We get upstairs. Get upstairs. Like I'm just telling him like your brother. I just this is so. In I hate industry parties because it's like everybody. Oh my god! Hey, haven't seen you so long, girl. Oh shit! What up, dude? Everybody's being so fake. This it, industry parties are disgusting. So I I kind of tell him I'm like yo, bro, just find me a corner and like I know I like to drink. Just see if I can get me a drink or whatever. They find me like some little spot and like we kind of all are like chilling in like some. It wasn't a corner. It was like a little place where we could sit in or whatever. I. You know who I thought this bum-ass thing of Freddie Gibbs was? I thought he was currency or some shit like that. Bro, a nigga comes over looking bummy as ever, and he's like, yo, it's like, yo, act, what up? And I'm like, uh, oh, what up? The only reason I thought it was currency, I'm going to be honest, right? He said, yo, yo, you got to hit this joint with me. He was trying to smoke with me. Bro, I don't smoke. I don't smoke by myself. I don't smoke with, I, I, nobody could pepper. I don't smoke, period. So they he's trying to like, yo, you got to smoke with me. You know, the desk and everybody is gassing. Oh, no, this is legendary. You got to smoke with him. I'm like, I'm not smoking. Like, I don't smoke. So that's like like me and him. And by the way, I only know this because my brother told me. They was like, remember the guy who was trying to get you to smoke? That's Freddie Gibbs. I'm like, what? I saw this nigga? He did all that goofy shit, but he's in there sucking cock. Like, he's trying to be cool with all the industry dudes. This is another problem I have with niggas like this. Don't act like you're the anti-industry or whatever, whatever. Now you're just trying to make memes and jokes. When when you're in them rooms, you're sucking dick. He's going up to call Cherry. What's up? Because he's trying to get them playlists. He's going up to this person because he's trying to get a back. He's sucking wild dick in there, moving from section to section like a whore. I remember Sway Lee comes in later. Sway Lee, like, you know, Sway Lee, they're hot as fire that time. They come in, they're like the big deal, whatever, whatever. I don't even think I, I said on this way because there was mad people around him. But still, Freddie Gibbs was a bum-ass nigga trying to suck mad cock. You feel me? Trying to get me to smoke with him. Like, get your bitch ass on out of here. Nigga, I'm not smoking with you, nigga. Like, nigga, your lips look black. I'm not, nigga, I'm not about to, like, this shit looks nasty, nigga. Like, you have froth on the side of your mouth. I'm not... I would never. Again, I don't even know it's Freddie Gibbs, my nigga. I'm literally thinking some up. Again, later, I'm about to, oh, Wayno was with us. Wayno's with us. Again, everybody I'm naming, go ask him. Because you know who con confirmed it? Because my brother kept saying, wait, why you got f issues with Freddie Gibbs? I'm like, this bum ass is keep this to me. Like, yo, he's like, you know you met him, right? Like, y'all were mad cool. Like, like he was just trying to get you to smoke with him. I'm like, I never met that bum ass. He's like, yo, let me call Wayno right now. You met him. I called Wayno. Wayno's like, ah, yeah, the nigga was right there. Like, you did meet Freddie Gibbs. I'm like, I met this bum? Anyway, that's my only interaction with this nigga What he's talking about we met before. You were sucking cock at an industry party because that's what you niggas do, including you, Freddie. I didn't know who nobody was. By the way, I, I, I hear... I, I still hear names that was there that's on now. Like, my brother even told me, was like, yo, you know Sweetie was there. I'm like, how the fuck would we know Sweetie in 2018? This was like 2018. Who the fuck knew Sweetie in 2018? It was like, I even had to check my brother, like, yo, why the fuck are you even paying attention to some of these niggas? Like, I don't know nobody that was really there. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not, like, over there. Anyway, cool. Bet. So that's my only really, uh, 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 uh um, um, Interaction with his bum ass nigga, but anyway, let's keep it going. Yeah, and that's cool. He's been a he's been a big promotional force for me these past two years. So thank you. Yes, I have. I've I've, I've made sure your brand has been synonymous with being a fucking clown. The academics, I appreciate you. Um, Do you feel like there was a point in time during the academics thing? Maybe you're putting a little too much energy into ac. Not at all. I just did some uh, the other day on Flex. What you mean? Because I ain't never, ain't never too much energy. I ain't no, ain't no, ain't never too much energy into a nigga that talk about your girl, your family. I ain't never too much energy. Yeah, that's it, ain't, it ain't never too much energy, nigga. You gonna get, you gonna get these motherfucking bullets whenever I shoot them out. It Figur is what it figuratively, is. of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. not like that. Yes, I'm not gonna yes, shoot yes, you. Yes, I, yes, I feel yeah. like I could sit down and talk to the nigga. He ain't no like hell of a nigga. He ain't like no nigga you got to be afraid of. And no, no, like no, no, no. So we could probably have a conversation. By the way, 
also, as I taught my shit, I've been open to have a conversation with him. I've been open to have a conversation with Freddie, but Freddie's a troll. I think he realized that there's benefit to be on the fuck academics train. And when I've tried to have serious conversation with him to possibly figure out why the hell we not on the same page, because like, like in the lexicon of rappers, why the fuck do I even keep talking about Freddie Gibbs, right? He's been really unwilling, so it, it's on him. Now, at this point, it's it's at a point where I'm like, yo, it's probably more beneficial to me to talk about you than talk to you. Um, Regardless, let me just finish the clip and then we'll, we'll get to, like, I want to speed this the fuck up. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? I, I don't need to hurt him. You know what I mean? I don't need to, like, hit him or no shit like that. I don't, I don't feel that way mm -hmm. because I don't feel that he's any type of threat. He's just a nigga that's posting about me on the fucking internet. What the fuck can he do to me? Right. I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah. So I felt like if he was in the room, we could even talk. And I'd be like, you wrong. You a fuck nigga. You a bitch nigga. I'm going to say all of that shit to your face. And then I'm be like, this, here's why. And you can say how you feel about me, and here's why. And that's that. And if you feel a way about it after, keep him. Would he be cool with me telling me he's a fuck nigga and a bitch nigga too? Moving. If he's cool with that, oh, we could have a great, great podcast. You call me all types of bitches. I call him all type of bitches. I clown him for getting beat up. He clown me for whatever. For being fat. I don't give a fuck. What, uh, that could be good. Or fight or keep shoot, up. Yeah. And we still be cool after that. <laughs> all right. Anyway. So that happened. Now, I think I've given you guys enough context to let you know. And I think this made him look not that bad. Or, you know, I don't know if he looks favorable. But he doesn't look like a bad guy. And, again, this is why I was having some weak moments in trying to figure out what I should do with all this information. Now, I came on here about a couple months ago, and I, I told y'all, I was about to fly Freddie Gibbs' girl, who was saying that she was possibly his ex at the time, out to where we record. So it's baby mama. Now we know it's baby mama. But she was trying to fly out. Now, I'm going to try to tell this part of the story, which is very important without outing people or, or whatever. I had very close and confidential sources tell me that, hey, listen, Freddie Gibbs' baby mama don't like Freddie Gibbs at the moment. Shout out to Plug Talk. Not saying this, hey, I had nothing to do with me. But they set up, she was interested to do Plug Talk. Keep in mind, you're going to find this out later. Freddie Gibbs, who had a poker face and, oh, yeah, I know my girl's a porn star. I don't care. He forced her to stop doing scenes with men. He didn't want other, like, at a certain point, I don't know if it's a specific dick that fucked her, that he was like, no, enough is enough. He made her promise, and he said, no more having sex with other men. However, she was going to do something called plug talk. And I don't know how this happened. But I know when I was like, yo, oh, yo, why don't you barbecue that nigga Adam? <laughs> see, see, I appreciate a good favor. <laughs> if you ever watch that plug talk shit, my boy Adam be on there dicking these bitches down himself. For this one, he made sure he hired two niggas to run a nice little train. When I seen that, I said, Adam. By the way, maybe Adam knew. I was like, Adam, the next time when the internet coming for you and coming for your head, you know, big act, I'm a loyal nigga. I want no parts. You said my ops, girl, you going to set up a train?
Now, I'm going to give you guys some more details behind it because in reality, I was supposed to be in L.A. around the same time. It was around the time when the Kyrie fight was happening. Remember the whole Kyrie and Flacco thing? I was supposed to be out there anyway. I was going to be out there. I was going to do some pimp and curling shit. We needed a narrator for that. But something bigger came up. I was informed that she was down to do an interview, possibly with me. And um, we, you know, just being completely honest, we got really close in setting it up. I was about to book flights for this young woman to come to New Jersey. We we're going to film at my headquarters. And even though some people, you know, we kind of looked into it because this is the year, like 2023 is the year of the back door. So we were looking at like, could this be, but are we like, yo, listen, at least at where we, we work at, it, it, would, it wouldn't be a successful mission to try to backdoor there. So whatever. Anyway, I was about to do an interview with this young woman. Eventually, I didn't. Couple things. First of all, I'm a bitch for that. I thought it would like I thought about me and my own situations with women, and I'm like, anytime a chick don't get what they want to get out of the relationship or situation with me, they're always salty. So. If I'm exposing him for essentially that, the same thing could be done to me. What I always told y'all, if you're going to dig a grave, make sure you dig too. But anyway, she was definitely saying, yo, no, let's do it, whatever, whatever. So I asked her two questions. And this is the reason, only reason why we didn't do the interview. And I want to speed this up. And I know I said that a couple times. I asked her, I said, listen, man. Yo, you can come on my live stream. Shit gonna be lit. We're probably gonna have 30,000 people watching all around. Like, come on, let's do it. She said, no, this is a off-the-record type of situation. I want to sit down with you. I want to look you dead in the eye, face to face. I said. At that point, I'm thinking... By the way, the last time somebody told me something like that, Tiana Trump, who was supposed to come on the stream, told me that. She was like, nah, how about we do this in person? I want to be in the same room as you. And I was thinking, anyway, to get further into it, I was trying to, I, like, I started asking her some questions. I said, yo, listen, oh, yeah, yeah, we could do it in person. I usually don't interview women like that, especially for my podcast, but I don't like this thing Freddie Gibbs. And I'm going to be honest with you, and Freddie, if you do hear this, I want to show you where your actions has brought other people. Because I'm not an evil nor vindictive person, but when someone pushes you to that realm, when you start talking about killing somebody and all these things, you're going to push them far. So a lot of things I entertained, and am currently entertained about you is only because you've pushed me there. I can't turn the other cheek, brother. Pause. So I asked this young woman, I said, what do you have to say on the podcast, man? Like, she she wanted me to fly her and her assistant from, like, she lives in Texas. I don't even know where. It's like, somewhere down south. And I was like, what are you going to say? I said, the only thing that's going to, like, break that, she was like, no, this is some shit everybody wants to know. I said, what is it? I'm like, if it's he fucked you over and got a new bitch, niggas do that all the time. I do it all the time. I asked her two questions. I said, did he beat your ass? She said, no. I said, okay. Second question. Is that nigga gay? Because <laughs> if you 
If you got a story saying you've been pushing 12-inch dildos in his ass, trust and believe we finna get this shit hilariously lit. She was like, uh, that's not what we're we not talking about that. So the whole time I was confused by her. I was like, what the fuck are we talking about? Anyway, I say that to say she is now popped out. And let me see if I can find her. Oh, hold on here. Yo, I know how to drag a story, don't I? Give me one second. Okay. Now, if eventually what I get, because she kept saying, oh, yo, th there's like something big I could mention about it. I'm like, yo, if the nigga not gay and if he didn't beat your ass, what the fuck would go viral? Um, so I was, I, I got disinterested a little bit, but I guess her thing was that she popped up pregnant. Okay. Anyway, I, I like, I don't want to keep dragging this on too further. Let me go to her Instagram. What the fuck is her Instagram? Here we go. I'm going to go through some tweets if I can, because there's a lot of explicit shit. Destiny. This bitch's name is Destiny Creams. Holy shit. All right. Let's see if I can re get through this thing real quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. I gotta scroll down. Show this thread. Okay. Now, I'm going to have to take this off the screen a bunch of times, okay? Because there's there's a lot of porno, pornographic images on there, and I cannot have it on my stream. Anyway, this is her Twitter. On May 4th, which was a couple days ago, she started exposing him. She said, remember when I did it, Freddie Gibbs? Well, let's talk about it, okay? Remember, he was claiming her heavy, this and third. Um, give me one second. I could make sure there's no porn here. Okay, cool. She showcased that, yo, so Freddie and I met in 2020. He slid into my DMs on Instagram. And so for the record, he always knew I did porn and was supportive. Again, Freddie Gibbs has been looking for the industry trophies to show he made it. By the way, I think one of his albums got nominated for a Grammy. That's one of the things that has been, you know, it, it, He's an older nigga who has never thought that the industry accepted him. So he's looking for symbols of success. So he meets this girl, and, you know, in his mind, he thinks he's Kanye. He th He's thinking she's as Amber Rose. And it says, so Freddie and I met in 2020, slid in my DMs. For the record, he always knew I did porn. It was very supportive. And um, she posts one of the things that he said, Back when he had the account, said, oh, yeah, fam, I knew my girl did porn when I met her. Y'all some detectives, though. Try again, champs. Okay, that's when Benny the Butcher tries to try to expose her. Anyway, he continued when she said, after we made an official blog start posting about us, we didn't care. We were having fun. Says Freddie Gibbs looks happy with his new girlfriend. Okay. Um. Here we go. Shortly after, it was time to go to Europe. We went. We enjoyed it. Everything was great. These are some text messages from Freddie. This is how he's talking. The nigga who's telling me he can't wait to spit on my casket. He can't wait to kill me. This is how this bitch ass nigga is in the DMs or the text message talking with this bitch. Sheesh. Bunch of love emojis. Allah gave me my dream woman. Granted, his dream woman was inhaling cock and slurping down semen like it was Nickelodeon slime. All right. So, oh, better than any accolade or award. OK, by the way, for any of our little players would be like, nah, that's how you kick game. He already fucked. So it's not like you're trying to kick game to fuck. He already fucked. 
Then uh, this is them in Paris. He's completely in love, okay? She probably did a couple scenes. She probably still has some semen on her breath, but he was loving her for who she was, okay? He says, we would always talk about having a baby. None of it was one-sided. Let's listen to what Freddie Gibbs was talking about. He's, this is her talking to him. She says, I want us to adventure. I want us to have fun with and without alcohol and all that extra shit. I want us to really live. We deserve that. I want us to be healthy for our children and the child we're planning. This was, he says, I just didn't want the party to stop because I didn't have nothing to go home to anyway. By the way, I don't know if I've told y'all, Freddie Gibbs, you know what? You know what? I'm going to be a, a decent human being. Freddie Gibbs got three other kids. Out of being a decent human being, no matter how much I want to bury this motherfucker, I will not put his other kids up there. It This ain't got nothing to do with them. Right? Yes. Right? He has three other kids. He showed them. But remember what he's saying to this girl. He says, I didn't have nothing to go home to. And then she says, well, now you do. He says, yes. And another child to look forward to. I love you so much. She says, I love you. He got three kids, but he's telling this porn star he got nothing to go home to. Now she's like, yo, well, you could go home to me or to look forward to me. And he's basically saying yes and another child. So he's kind of affirming that he's planning to have a child with her. Let me continue, people. Now, we all know about this infamous incident. She says, after we got back from Europe, his stateside tour started. Everything was good until we got jumped in Buffalo, New York. Here's me fighting, looking thick in the orange. Freddie is in the back in the green. Remember, they were tossing around Freddie Gibbs like a rag doll, okay? This is her right here, okay? This is her right here, looking like Caillou, right? That's look a little fat, though. Okay, I see what's going on. And they said, Freddy's in the back in the green. I can't even see that nigga. That nigga is getting molly whopped. Okay? They're throwing him left, right, center. They're beating his ass. These are how the Buffalo niggas was giving it up. By the way, let me just point this out for all my men here. We can't even see where the fuck Freddy's at. There's punches being thrown on him. You know what a bitch gonna do when... This is why anytime a girl put up pictures of you and her, she don't give a fuck how you look. She only care how she looks. Look, it's easy to identify her. Where the fuck is Freddie? You got to imagine Freddie is a nigger down here getting his ass whooped. She, how the fuck she even got a, a picture of that, uh, 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 of you getting your ass beat like that? But okay. Let's keep it going. <laughs> so Freddie's in the back in the green. All right. Let me see. The next thing she says is, yo. She says, that day really changed everything for me. I ended up having to get a prescription for Xanax because I was so paranoid. Now, I'm going to have to be honest with y'all. This is true. When I was telling her that I that my studios are essentially damn near in New York, she was very cautious she 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 clammed up a bit. I'll I'll be honest with you about this. She clearly has some PTSD. So she says, yo, I ended up having to get prescription for Xanax because I was so paranoid. I was having nightmares. It was horrible. I felt like I was going crazy at times. Let's read the text messages again. She says to Freddie, Are you okay? He says, duh. Says laughing my ass off. I had a horrible dream. I had to check. Says I'm okay. I called you twice. This is him calling her. And then here's another message. 
She says, I know you're exhausted. He says, baby, you have no idea. If it wasn't for the sex, I would be really banged up. You took care of me. She sends her heart. He says, you made sure I was always feeling good no matter what. That's what I'm here for. He says, yes, ma'am. Nothing we can't get through. I love you. She says, I love you too, baby, so much. Okay? All right. All right. Look like they're in love. Look like shit's going according to plan. Now, this is very important right here because what happens is she says, then one of his baby mamas who I've never met, remember I told you I had three other kids, never spoken to, starts sending me these voice memo threats talking about the fight that I was literally involved in trying to pull people off him. Be fucking for real. Listen to these voice messages. Here's the first one. Let me see. Okay, here we go. Ready? understand something bitch i don't need to fuck with you on no fucking social media i'll talk to you to your motherfucking face you're the one that's scary okay did i miss a screenshot somebody told me i missed a screenshot y'all gotta make sure it's not porn because if it's porn i'm gonna they're gonna ban me oh here we go i'm sorry we did miss a screenshot. Here we go, Chad. This is Freddie Gibbs, the ugly duckling. Let me tell you something about Freddie Gibbs. And I talked to somebody in his family about this. Freddie, yes, your family members don't like you neither. Freddie was always the ugly duckling. A bastard baby. A nigga who never liked himself. He knew he had a milk dud type look. And he always was looking for justification from other people to, for him to feel good with him, himself. Rapping wasn't a thing he did because he was this big vice lord. He even entertained joining the gang because he was a insecure, ugly little bitch. So what does he do? At first, when he feels like he's worthless, he just starts nutting in random girls. Once he gets some fame, he feels like now he could get the girl he been wanted. But then he needs assurance from her to make him feel good about what he is living for. So this is him texting this girl, sending a picture of him, bald head and everything, saying, I'm ugly without you. I really ain't shit without you. Remember I told you. He's like one of them little 16-year-old girls that bulimic. Like, he is insecure. He says he's ugly without her. He, he ain't really shit without her. She says, he says to her, I'm just another nigga. I'm going to make you proud. I love you. And he says the rabbit emoji. This is just a nigga who been clowning people online. And for, pe for people who watch me, this, you know, as much as I've said about Freddie, like this isn't the, oh, let's bully Freddie thing. It's to showcase that somebody like Freddie Gibbs and many people that you might know who are bullies, they're just lost souls. They're just people who are confused. They have feelings as well. While they bully you, look how they talk. I'm ugly without you. I ain't shit without you. That's who Freddie Gibbs is. Now, Going back to the the voice uh, the voice notes from the the girlfriends, babe. I hear these voice notes from one of the girlfriend or, or or the baby mamas that actually have a skin. Listen to this. Understand something, bitch. I don't need to fuck with you on no fucking social media. I'll talk to you to your motherfucking face. You're the one that's scary. Okay. I don't want Freddie Gibbs, babe. I stopped fucking him and that's why you're in a relationship. I told him that his dick don't get all the way hard. He popped out and got in a relationship with you because I don't want to have sex with him. You're welcome. I don't want that nigga. I've been in a relationship for years. I'm okay, girl. I'm good. The problem is, is that you're retweeting videos of my baby father being in a fucking fight enough to instigate some shit that's already going on. That's why I don't fucking like you because you're weird. And you're thirsty for clout. And there's something fucking wrong with you. That's why I don't like you, bitch.
You can play this shit for him if you want to because he's so fucking retarded. He think that me going at you and talking to him. He's so fucking retarded. He think that I'm sending you this message because I'm in love with him. Bitch, I don't want him. I could have him if I want him. All I got to do is fucking be nice. The nigga was just FaceTiming me the other night for my fucking attention, bitch. He want me. He loved me to fucking death. Been loving me for years, bitch. You're welcome. I gave up on that nigga, so he's yours now. But what you won't do is sit up here and get my fucking baby father killed playing on this fucking internet, bitch. And I don't like you. And when I see you, you're going to get touched. Understand that, bitch. You're a, you maybe, what, 130 pounds? Bitch, I'll knock your ass out in one punch. Don't fucking play with me, ho. Something. That man pays my fucking bills. Him being on the road pays my fucking bills. And you instigating shit fucks that up for me. Okay? You being fucking weird and unnecessary fucks that up for me. That's why I don't like you. You fucking with my money. That's why. Okay. I don't give a fuck about that nigga, but I do want him to finish him shows and pay these fucking bills. Now quit fucking playing with me. And if I ever see you in California, ho, I'm stumping you out. Understand that. Understand that. Know that. You so tough and you want to be in beef and you want to retweet fights and instigate shit like it's not real and it don't affect other people's lives. Come to California and I'll beat your ass myself because I don't like you. Understand that it has nothing to do with the nigga. It's you and your fucking character. You're weird and you need a fucking therapist, bitch. You do. ASAP. Where the fuck is your child? He's so busy talking about my child in sections. Ain't you leaving your child on somebody to go run behind a nigga in fucking New York? He just got his... So apparently she has a kid too. Fucking ass beat. And you need to be home with your motherfucking daughter. If it's not running behind niggas sucking dick on film, you running behind rappers. Your daughter is not a priority in your fucking life, bitch. Gather it together, ho. Get it together. Now go play these messages for him and lay up under him and laugh. You can go do that. But bitch, the veneers you just got, bitch, I knocked them hoes clean out and I do not mind. Okay? Ask him. I do not mind. I love fighting bitches like you. That's fun to me. He kept his other baby mama from around me. Because he already knew she would have got her ass rocked. Just like you. So try it. Try me again. Keep playing with me on this fucking social media, bitch. I'm crazy for real. I'm not, I'm not joking. And he knows that. Alright, then there's more. Life, okay? I got two degrees. I own a house. My kids fucking love me. And there's no videos of me sucking dick on the fucking internet for attention. Look at God. Okay? I'm the black woman you pretend to be every fucking day, bitch. Every fucking day. Good luck with that. So even if I don't whip your ass, bitch, I beat you in life. Try me. The nick. And before you sit up here and say I won't do nothing, bitch, I nigga you lay up with every night pays my bills. All right. Life, okay? I got two degrees. I own a house. All right. I can show from right here. I bet. Nah, chat. It ain't really show nothing type shit. You know, Twitch, Twitch be looking for a reason to get a nigga like me out of there. So that's why I got to. They be looking for a reason to get me out of here now. Like, this nigga told me all that rumble shit. Like, let's get this nigga out of here. Twitch, let me rock, please. Fuck with y'all niggas. Anyway, yo, we back on Twitch, though. Um, cool. I'm reading through a couple more of these joints, yo. Uh, this is her basically saying, yo, I'm not trying to make it seem like our relationship was perfect because of ups and downs, blah, blah. Uh, we have, but we have fun together and consider each other family. This interview was six months ago. Mind you, I am six months pregnant right now. Then she says, yo, he had this idea that we would name the baby Penny, like Penny Hardaway, Hardaway if he was a boy, right? And um, this was what that conversation was. Let me see it. It said, this is, for, yo, damn, this thing would be typing like a hoe. He says to her, not my baby being one sense. Yes, not us having cupcakes with pennies for the baby shower. A penny for your thoughts, bitch. She says, oop. I don't even know what that means. Period. 
she and he says can't wait to meet my penny then she says crazy to think about it again he says it is this is the first time i've been in love like this where i want to have a baby oh this thing wanted to have a kid i don't want it to be like oops we got a baby okay cool all right give me a second people i gotta make sure this shit is not gonna fuck up no more time and it says uh here we go Another video. He said, fast forward November, we went out for his friend's birthday and we came back home super drunk. But he would say shit like shit like this to me, even sober. This was November 25th, the night I got pregnant. We fucked like six times this day. What the fuck was he saying? Here we go. Like the cutest dude ever. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. Hey, come here. I'm tired. I want to marry you. One day. Oh, you will marry me? I do. I said it. <laughs> oh, it keeps me in for the same for you. I want to get married. I want to be with my wife every day. Okay, let's do it. I love you so much. I love you too. Big plus. Yeah. You, see, you look like Kenny. Right <laughs> I go to bed. I'm tired. Oh, did you have fun Yeah. I love you, baby. I love you too. Who goes? Please live in California. Okay. Okay, I love you. Love you. All right. So the next video, next thing she says is that yo. December 12th came around and I took a pregnancy test and it was very faintly positive. I was supposed to get my period December 13th, so I was right around four weeks pregnant when I found out. When I told Freddie, his tone immediately changed. I let a few days go by because I knew he was in Chicago with his family for the holidays, but I also knew we had to continue this conversation. Okay? Th this is the conversation here. He says, now it make no, she says to him, now, it makes sense why I couldn't get up out of the bed last time I was there. I was so fucking tired. Uh, he, he says, yo, my head's spinning right now. We'll work it out no matter what the situation. She says, I'm so sorry. I feel so sad. I'm just like, how? He says, I don't know what to think right now, but I'm going to figure it out. I always do. He sa uh, She says, I'm j I just need a huggy. I'm down bad. I'm going to go to sleep. I love you. He says, I love you too. Then she says, Text is supposed to freeze over again. He says, yikes. Yeah, nigga saying yikes, he down bad. Um, then she says to him, I've been trying to give you your space with the kids, to be with the kids, and I'm still trying to process what's happening. But ever since you, uh, since I told you about this, I don't really hear from you, LOL. He says, I miss you too. No, that's not the case. I definitely been trying to soak up this time and try to be off my phone though. And the situation is a tough one. Yeah, I understand. Um, I just have no one to um, to go to, you know. So mentally, I'm just trying to hold it together in front of everybody. And then she says, I understand I've been doing the same. He says, I, I've been thinking about my life, and that's a lot for me to deal with. So I naturally don't want to think about it right now, but it is what it is. I could barely pull together the three I God. Then this is her again. Hold on. She says, I'm so confused at this point because have we not been talking about a baby for the last eight months? Then he says, or she says about him, shortly having this conversation, we go to Australia and I could tell he was still avoiding the conversation. One night we went to the club and he was like, I know we have some shit to figure out when we get home. It was a two-week tour, but I decided to leave after one week. I needed to get home, find out how far I was along, etc. So I flew home, and a couple weeks went by when Freddie got home from Australia. We talked again in person, and he was telling me how he wasn't ready for a child. This and that. Whole time I was just confused because it didn't have to come to this. Let me scroll up one more time. It didn't have to come to this. My bad. I guess I don't understand the motive behind leading someone to believe one thing than doing another. And these are some more text messages. 
This is him saying, Destiny, I love you. We don't have to do this anymore, but let's handle our situation whether you have the child or not. I love you. I'm here. But we don't have to continue this no more. She says, okay. He says, I'm about to finish this homework and put the kids to bed. She says, okay. Then she says, I'm really conflicted. I don't really want to bring a child into the world if you're feeling this way. I don't. I don't want you to be a man and just do what you got to do when it comes to me. I want you to be here, love. If we don't got love, we don't got nothing. And if termination is what we decide, and I got to do it in L.A., uh, it's, I got to do it in L.A., it's outlawed in Texas. There's a lot of levels to this shit. Or adoption, or whatever the case may be. <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm gonna pop my shit in a second. Just, just, just let me read through this shit. Then she says, "Yo, this is extremely hard for me." He says, "Well, adoption is out for me. If we have a child, I'm gonna raise a child. If we go handle it in California, that's fine. I understand." She says, "I think we need to keep all of our options open, but we could agree to disagree." I'm 10 weeks, but I look like a fucking elephant. I'm willing to discuss this with you tomorrow. Just had to let you know how I feel right now. I think we should always be able to tr be transparent with each other. I'm going to try to pack. I know this is a completely life-altering decision. No matter which one we make for both of us, not just me, I want us to try to show each other grace, okay? Cool. Let me scroll up again. Fuck. All right, good. Then she says, the next morning, he had to go to New York for Jimmy Fallon. I told him if he, if he wants me to get an abortion and not to continue, um, I'm not going to continue to be in a relationship with him. He cried. I cried. That was the end of that. So I went to the abortion clinic thinking I was about 12, uh, nine weeks pregnant. I get there. The doctor lets me know I'm closer to 12 weeks and saw our little baby moved around. And I knew then I couldn't go through with it. After we broke up, I turned... His phone off because, yes, I was paying the bill. Freddie gives they have a fucking phone? This whole time I've been beefing with a nigga who been working on a family plan that he don't even pay? Yo, this is the shit that puts it in perspective. Freddie Gibbs, who me and his issues always been through tweeting and Twitter. This motherfucker hasn't had a phone and his girl been paying for his phone. And that's why he's been starting all these fucking issues. I feel like an idiot, chat. Um, he said he never checked on me after said procedure. Never called to confirm if I went through with it. I just simply never heard from him again. I reached out to him as manager's assistant and no one will respond. I feel like I've done my part. Keep it real and this is the thanks I get. <laughs> Noted. I no longer want a response. No bad blood. I'm going to be just fine, but I have to speak my truth. And then um, she retweeted somebody saying this. I think that's the end of it. All right. Let me scroll up and let me get to the shit, man. My fact, let's do it here. So, Freddie, I'm going to keep it a bean with you, brother. Let me get some light on my face for this one. Freddie, we get it. You don't want to be the father of this child. And even though Fred, uh, even though uh, Pusha T has allegedly shamed people into being being a father before, it appears that you want no no parts of this child. You know, in hindsight, I've thought about me meeting up with the mother of your child, which her name is Destiny Fox, and there's only one way to handle all this, people. Chat. I have a few options on the table. And I need to, I need y'all to, I need to ask y'all if, if this is 
something that's within the realm of possibility. Keep in mind, if you don't know, she's currently, hold on, I gotta pause this again. She's currently six months pregnant with his child. You might ask, how does she know it's his child? Okay, here we go. I'll play this, then I'll tell you the options that's on the table, okay? Here we go. You, a few celebrity D. There we go. Six months. In this belly right here, we got Freddie Jr. I've never been more compelled in my life to like to make sure a child's upbringing is is of the utmost importance. So, actually, I I I I'll just throw it in the hat before now, Freddie. Freddie, this young woman, this is your queen, this is your Beyonce, this is who you chose, this is who you told the whole world you were comfortable with what she did. Don't be ashamed that she's a porn star. You said it publicly, you were okay with it. You gave her verbal promises. You told her you couldn't wait to have a child with her. You said you were expecting and would be happy to have a child with her until the child came. Freddie, what you didn't know and you're going to hear her admit is that when she hit me up, which was about four months ago, your child was already two months cooking in that belly. When she appeared on Adam 22 Plug Talk, your child was a little bit more than baby batter at that point. It was starting to be formed into a full-on fetus. That's Freddie Jr. in that gut. Where she wanted to link with me. This might sound crazy. But I, I hope you understand the grace I have extended you. I know I'm still making fun of you. I would have been rubbing that belly. I bought a stethoscope off Amazon. I don't even know if that's how you even hear the baby heartbeat, nigga. I was going to have a stethoscope in my ear and have the joint on her gut. And I was going to try to talk to your baby. Tell her, no, tell him, hey, Freddie Jr., your father's in the real world. He's a bitch. He just got beat up by Benny the Butcher, by Jim Jones. And he's getting clowned by academics every day. Are you okay? And I ordered some shit from, I got to show y'all, it's some little jelly shit. I don't know what the fuck it does, but I was going to rub the gut. You know what I mean? Get a little nice little rub on. It's Freddie Jr. I was going to talk to, I was going to talk to your child, Freddie. By the way, this child going to come to existence. So I know y'all going to say, act, this is too far, this is evil. Remember, he said he couldn't wait till I died. So, Freddie, you might have gotten saved, but you still didn't get saved. Because I was going to have a stethoscope. I wanted to hear the heartbeat. It's your child. But with me saying that, I want I, I want to... Make sure I protect the reputation of this woman because she's a special woman. You wouldn't find a woman like this many places. She is special. She is one of these feminist queens who have taken her sexuality into her own existence and it was proven by this interview. Just listen. Of life, um, I think it could be a whole lot of things. Like, I think rappers want to be out in the club all the time. I need to have the peace of mind and know that I'm not going to catch anything. Of course. Yeah. It's very important. Right. 
In your opinion, does size matter? Yes. Um, and I'm Freddie. I want you to realize, and this is why I, I just don't want you to mention me ever again. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you why I've offered some grace, even though I am gonna do one thing. And if she bites, she bites. But whatever. Freddie. You know, I was on FaceTime watching this train happen. I didn't know. I didn't know Freddie Jr. was in the gut. I'm going to be honest. But she was going to leave from that set to come to Jersey. What's the going rate these days of porn for, 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 for a little scene? What is it? Little five bands? I could have had the homies from the hood. Or another little choo-choo. On the mother of your child. I ain't do it though. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm extending some grace. This is this is really my last call for. Actually. You know what? Actually it's not. Let me stop playing. I, I'm, I'm lying. Let me just come clean with y'all. I, I wanted to just like take the high road. Because I'm like yo. We had this nigga down so bad. And everybody I talked to said. Act if it was you. He would violate all the way. And this is why. I'm a little sad because I didn't take her up on the offer. So she never told me she was pregnant. Um, so I was like, yo, bro, like, what? Ha like, it, it's just her, it's, it's his ex-girlfriend. But I do want to say this. Because one thing I do like about her, she's about to back. And let me get straight to it. Destiny, I do know you're taking offers. I have a $10,000 bid today that I'm offering to you Freddie Gibbs is a deadbeat and a bum he wants no parts but trust me he does care um two things don't ask me how but after the vicious beatdown in Buffalo we have Freddie Gibbs DNA don't ask me how I need a DNA test to prove, which I believe that would be easy, right? Because you're the mother. I believe after, I think, how many weeks we could do a, a DNA test to prove that he's the father. But I'm going to buy, you ever see for the Staples Center? It used to be called the Staples Center. Then it got called Crypto Arena. Then it got changed to something else. You get what I mean? Like, it, it, it could change anything. I'm offering $10,000 to have the name and rights to Freddie Jr.'s child. $10,000 to you, Destiny. Promise you, hand on the Bible. We, we got to get a public. We got to get a public uh, um, um, DNA test to confirm it's Freddie Gibbs' kid. I will have a contract in writing. $10,000. By the way, it doesn't have to be the first name. You might have to have a nice little cute first name. It's all good. I ain't trying to trying to get in the way of it. But even the middle name. I want to name Spready Gibbs Jr.'s kid. Because this is only right. I'm trying to buy the naming rights for 10 thousand dollars everything will be executed when i see that middle name or it could be a last name or it's, i don't care what it is on the birth certificate this is the only way to deal with the op that's the only way that's the only way <laughs> yo I think that's fair. $10,000. Like, trust me, that's a small price to pay. <laughs> bro, that's a small price to pay for me. <laughs> Chat, I was just thinking if his middle name could be Livingston, that would be amazing.
All right. Anyway, I don't want to play this interview. By the way, uh, she, she did an interview recently, which, by the way, here's another thing, too. Why the fuck didn't she just tell me that she was pregnant? Because I didn't want to do an interview with her because I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I'm like, what's we going to talk about? Anyway, I don't want to play some of this real quick. I'm going to tell you why, because I have been with someone who just had a really, really big situation going on and it just wasn't it didn't feel good to me it wasn't what it was supposed to give mm -hmm. so i think that there's definitely a you can be too big for sure you know what i mean and yeah. that's just not that's not what feels good to me so so what how big is too big like 10 plus inches okay that's just you're doing too much mm -hmm. you know right what is like your ideal size i love a good like five six incher like mm -hmm. just a little bit like mm -hmm. i love that <laughs> <laughs> okay me too there's nothing wrong with that yeah. yeah what if a guy wanted to but he had like a good three inches hard three inches hard mm -hmm. i feel like i would need to ask him what he's going through mm -hmm. like we would have to get to the bottom of like why it's three inches hard mm -hmm. how we can fix it yeah or like what what could i do with that i don't okay. know if i could do anything with that okay so no tricks on like a three incher no, I don't think so. Hey. I would. I oh. She is watching. I just checked her Instagram. She's watching. By the way, Destiny, I, I, I want to be very careful. This is not. I, I got nothing against you, girl. Like, you know, I think you're doing your thing and I think you're in a fucked up situation. I want to speak to you. Let me speak to you directly, actually, for a second. And we'll, we'll get back to this. Let me speak to you and, and speak very directly about my thoughts about this. I think Freddie Gibbs is a plain out sucker. I think you've seen it close up that this guy has been frauding. Not only is he trying to portray to be something he's not when it comes to hip hop. And we get it because there's a lot of people in entertainment who want to be something that they're not. They put on these like, you know, they basically put on the act. It's different than when they're dealing with a woman or someone who essentially is making a really serious decision about having a child. And they've gassed them up saying, hey. I'm ready to have a child with you, which essentially, I, I'm going to be honest with you, with everything you put out, I thought it was like, oh, maybe he just sold you a dreamer or it was some cap shit. No, the nigga seemed like he was really completely in love with you. And like a bum ass nigga, after it was evident that you were pregnant that was going to have the child, his opinion changed. That would be very different if he said, hey, you know, we're fucking, you know, I'm just not, I don't want to have kids right now. The nigga was over here naming kids with you. That's some sucker shit. That's some sucker shit. And I feel for you because there is many moments you told the nigga, hey, listen, I don't just want you to be here. I want to have the kid with someone. Who is going to be in a relationship with me? And he basically key keyed and whatever the case is. And I agree with you. I think that's fucked up. Somebody said, ain't that what the baby did? Matter of fact, we got to get on Discord. How do I get on Discord? Fuck Discord. I get her on the phone. I'm going to call her. This is what we got done. I'm going to call her. Yeah, we got to call. Fuck that. Call it right now. We got to go. 